The Magi, or wise men from the East, are fascinating figures. The text of Matthew does not tell us how many of them arrived in Jerusalem, and he doesn't make a great deal of effort to describe them. Remember, these Magi may have been considered wise men in many other parts of the world, but they would not have been likely revered in Israel among the Jews. After all, they were Gentiles. Based solely on the writings of Matthew, this is what happened. Jesus is born in Bethlehem, perhaps a year or two earlier. Now, I know that doesn't match with what you were taught, but remember the age of the children Herod massacred. He wanted to make sure he covered Jesus. Also remember the practical side of this. These wise men started traveling after they saw the Bethlehem star, so it took them some time to get there. The star led the Magi as far as Jerusalem, but then disappeared. Once in Jerusalem, the Magi began to inquire where the Christ child could be found by asking the people in the city. Obviously, they may have been wise, but they were not well versed in Jewish scripture, else one of them would have known of Micah's writings. Word eventually reaches Herod that some magi had come to town seeking to find and worship a relatively newborn baby, the king of the Jews. Herod is greatly troubled by this news, and consequently all those who were subject to Herod, obviously the people of Jerusalem, became worried about how he would react to this news. Herod summoned the chief priests and experts in the law, inquiring where the Messiah was to be born. Now, let's pause here and say these guys are already squealing on Jesus. The religious elite inform Herod that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, citing the prophecy of Micah. Now, Herod knows where the child is born. Now he needs to know when the child was born. Herod then privately summons the Magi to him. He's getting ready to use them. He's meeting with them alone, and he asks them when the star appeared. Thus, he was able to fix the birth date of the holy child, and therefore he knows the age of the child. At this point, Herod sends the Magi to Bethlehem to find the Messiah. He's trying to use these fellows as unwitting spies, instructing them that they should return and inform him of the location of the child so that he could worship the child also. As the Magi leave Jerusalem headed towards Bethlehem, the star reappears again and the Magi rejoice greatly for they now have their divine GPS to help them find their way. The star then leads the Magi exactly to the location of the child where they worship him. As Gentile Magis bowed to Jesus, a baby, they demonstrated that this was not just an ordinary Jewish child, this was a child owed reverence by the world. Think about it. These learned Gentiles, after the star appeared, made a journey, a long journey, to worship and proclaim the Lordship of Jesus. They were not well versed in Jewish tradition, but they understood and believed. The gifts of the Magi, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, were indeed expensive. And while some would place symbolic meaning about these gifts, and I don't take away those symbolic references. As a practical matter, these expensive gifts would finance the sojourn of Jesus and his parents, poor parents, into Egypt to save our Savior. God divinely directed the Magi to return home a different way, so to avoid Herod and facilitate the Holy Child's escape to Egypt. This act of disobedience involved considerable risk for the Magi. 
by this time, the dreams had informed them that they were being used by Herod. But remember, Jewish leaders had no problems in flipping on Jesus. These courageous magi acted in disobedience even though they knew that if Herod found out, they would pay a dear price for their disobedience. The magi, some Gentiles, facilitated Jesus' escape to Egypt. They financed his trip and through their disobedience, they created enough time for his family to escape. Again, divine intervention caused Joseph to leave the nation where he and his family would be oppressed and killed and moved to Egypt. As the family of Jesus goes to Egypt, I have to pause and think about current day situations. At this point, the person that would grow up to be our savior is a brown refugee child with a family that is poor, that is a family seeking safety from the violence at home, a family sneaking across the border into a foreign land, hoping for a better life. It's funny how the Bible is always current. Joseph, a man who is described as righteous, follows the directions and escapes to Egypt. They stay there until Herod dies and the danger is over. And as a result, the prophecy of Hosea is fulfilled. He writes, I called my son out of Egypt. That's the lesson for this week. And happy birthday, Aunt Rita. And happy heavenly birthday, Mom. Bye.